Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook, and I'm here to talk about the latest episode of The Flash. This was called Goodbye Vibrations, which of course is a takeoff on Good Vibrations, which is a Beach Boys song. This, of course, was the episode that featured the departure of Cisco, aka Vibe, who I've been reading will return later in the season, if not just for the finale. I think also one more episode they mentioned. I could be wrong with that, but definitely for the finale of the season. So what happened in this episode? Well, they got right into it. Cisco dropped the bomb right in the opening. Tells everybody that he's leaving and moving to Star City. And nobody freaks. Caitlin, Barry, Iris, they all kind of go, oh, okay. Yeah, well, hey, good luck. It's, that's great for you, because I guess he's moving to you know, moving there to be part of Argus. Not only that, but Barry even packs for him because Cisco says, oh, I've got a bunch of stuff still yet to pack. It's going to take me a while, but I'll, you know, be leaving in a day or two or whatever. So Barry actually packs all of his stuff for him. And Cisco kind of discovers this and goes, oh, well, there, that was helpful. And Okay. And he starts to realize they're not really acting like they're going to miss him. And he kind of wanted them to sort of act that way, I guess, or to feel that way anyway. And it doesn't seem like they do. Next, what we see is he takes Chester on a tour of the back room, the Star Archives, as it were, the Star Lab, Star Lab Archives. And that was pretty cool. We get to see a bunch of set pieces that we've seen over the course of the seasons. One of them being the test helmet, the original like orange red helmet that Barry wore when he was first testing his speed powers out on the track in the first season. So that was pretty cool. Chester, of course, was going nuts. He loves all this stuff. A little further along in the episode, Cisco kind of has a moment with Caitlin where she's telling me, you know, we're, we are going to miss you and we're happy for you, but we're going to miss you around here. And she says, oh, Snow said something like, yeah, okay, whatever. Get out of here, buddy. Something, you know like Frost would say. And then Caitlin says, yeah, or hand me your badge and also your access card. Very like clinically and matter of factly. And he's like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. It seemed kind of cold. Even as a viewer, I'm thinking, wow, that was kind of cold. So Cisco, of course, this only adds to his feeling of, you know, that they don't care that he's leaving. Now, we go from here to a scene with the new Rainbow Raider, who is a female, and she convinces a bank manager to give her a huge check, I think it was like $10 million, by using her rainbow powers, which I guess involves making eye contact with someone and somehow putting them in a trance in a way that has to do with light or the refraction of light or the spectrum of light, something like that. So this, of course, comes to the attention of Team Flash and Flash and Iris like, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. Or was either Flash and Caitlin, or Barry anyway, and Caitlin or Barry and Iris, I don't remember. And he's like, no, no, I wanna go with you. I wanna do this, I wanna do one last caper with you guys before I go, and they're like, okay. So Barry and Cisco as Mecha Vibe confront Rainbow Raider and she zaps a guy nearby and makes him take off in a car or something and, or, or whatever and Barry has to go stop him. So while Barry was doing that, Cisco managed to find himself under her trance. See, he went there with Flash with a device that they had used before to counteract the original Rainbow Raider's powers, but they didn't work on this Rainbow Raider. So when Barry was gone, she put the whammy on Cisco. So he gets back and Cisco is all whammied and Rainbow Raider is gone. So they know that eventually this will wear off, but in the interim, they're trying to keep Cisco away from stuff because the effect that this has on you is it makes you giddy, happy, and like kind of uncontrollable in a way that, not uncontrollable, but you're like, you know, like a loose cannon, like, oh, what does this button do? And oh, what does that button do? <laughs> kind of thing. And so they're trying to keep him contained. They put Chester on babysitting duty, but Chester kind of fails because by talking with Chester, 
Cisco comes to think Cisco Cisco comes to think that there's going to be a surprise party for him. So he like gets past Chester and goes into the main Star Labs workroom or whatever. And he's like, oh yeah, there's gonna be a party. And he goes and puts on dance music. But then he also sends the same dance music to Barry's visor with images on it of like happy cats dancing or something. And it obstructs Barry's view. And for some reason he didn't stop running and ran into a van. And when he turns around after Cisco finally shuts it off, there's Rainbow Raider and she zaps Barry. So now Barry is zapped and they still don't have Rainbow Raider. So when Barry gets back to Star Labs, he's all hyped up and, you know, giddy happy. And he starts like dancing and Cisco's dancing. It was like a literal flash dance scene. You know, talk about flash dance. Anyway, it was pretty wonky. <laughs> pretty cool actually, it was fun, but also cringe. But Chester figures out a way to bring them out of it. He has a device that he's come up with based on, I think, Cisco's old vibe glasses. And he brings them out of it. So that whole catastrophe was over, thank goodness. Now, they figure out from what Barry saw Rainbow Raider doing just before she zapped him, that she's going to steal a dirigible, an airship, and that it looks like she's trying to fly away with all this money and riches that she's stolen. So Allegra teleports Barry and Cisco as Mecha Vibe onto the airship where they confront Rainbow Raider. And she's like, you don't understand. I'm trying to give this money to the people. I plan to drop it just randomly all over and let everybody have some wealth. And they're like, okay, we think, you know, we understand you don't like that people are struggling. And you know, we'll find a way to help you do that. I'll, I'll talk to, I forget who Barry says, but he's going to set her up with a community outreach program, I guess, in the area so that she can help people that way and not this way. And he's going to do that instead of recommending, he's going to recommend that, you know, that be what happens to her instead of going to jail. The problem is that the blimp somehow ends up in a state where Rainbow Raider can't control it anymore. Something happens either because Flash's energy when he was moving around or whatever, which he was trying not to do because he didn't want to ignite the gas, but I guess he made a move or something. I forget what happened, but the blimp ends up being non-responsive. So it's gonna crash and it's gonna hurt a lot of people and they don't know what to do. And Cisco says, I think I can straighten it out. You guys get out of here. And Barry's like, no, I don't want to leave you. But Cisco's like, you know, you gotta let me do this. So Flash teleports out of there with Allegra and Rainbow Raider and starts taking all the people that it was going to hurt who were in, I guess, the Central City Stadium where the blimp was gonna crash and brings them out one or two at a time, super speed style. And then Cisco manages not to crash the blimp. He manages to avoid the blimp crash and the day is saved, which was pretty cool. The next thing we really see is a scene where it's acknowledged that Cisco and the guys are gonna have a goodbye breakfast the next day and everybody leaves the lab. Cisco is the last one out and he goes over and touches the emblem that's on Barry's original suit from season one that's on display in the lab, kind of like just to touch it one more time, I guess. And then as he's, as he's leaving, he put his hand up and touched the, I guess, threshold over the door. You wouldn't call that a threshold, more of an eave or whatever, the, the top of the door frame or whatever and just kind of walks out. And then there's a scene where he and Barry and Joe are having a goodbye party of, by themselves, I guess at Barry's place. And they end up singing karaoke, which was pretty cool, even though Cisco can't sing. Uh, <laughs> but Barry and Joe can because those actors both were uh, either on Broadway or in singing shows and stuff. So that was pretty cool. And then they did sort of do the breakfast scene the next day where Cisco, or, or might have been just before. Anyway, Cisco hands out cool shirts that he thinks will remind or hopes will remind the team of him while he's away. So that's pretty much how the story of this episode ended with Rainbow Raider and Cisco. But before the episode fully ended, there was a scene of Mrs. Joe, whose first name I forget, 
arriving home, finding no one there, and looking in the mirror and seeing a reflection of herself wearing some kind of gold mask. And she says, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to find you to the reflection in the mirror. So I don't know what that's about. We're going to find out more about it in future episodes, I'm guessing. Also, by the way, during this episode, I kind of left it out, but Iris had to say goodbye to Siso's girlfriend, who was her assistant at the paper. And so they had some conversations about that. And they had a little sort of get together to celebrate this character's new beginning that she's going to, and they took a cool selfie. Anyway, that's really the whole episode. I thought it was an okay episode. I didn't think the villain plot was particularly good, but I don't know. I kind of liked the new Rainbow Raider. It was sad to see Cisco go, and his antics will be missed on the show, but the show goes on. I'm hoping it won't go on past next season. I'm a diehard Flash fan, and I've always enjoyed the show. But, you know, these shows can get old, and the shtick can wear thin. And I think eight seasons, you know, they've already, they're already going to go ahead and do an eighth season. I think after that, they should sort of end the show. You don't want it to get so old that it starts to jump the shark, you know. And there's even talk that Barry wouldn't be in a uh, that the Barry character wouldn't be in a ninth season because Grant wants to leave after eight, which is understandable. And I think it would be a mistake to replace the main character and go forward because it would just get silly at that point. Because so much of the show is Barry and Iris and all of that, and so I, it would be a different show. So only time will tell. This season is not even halfway over yet, I don't think. So there you go. Anyway, I'll be back again with a review of the next episode. Until then, I leave you with my familiar words, peace and long life.